<laughs> you cleared the throat, you know. I always feel so bad, because, like, as soon as we start recording them, I was like, dang, I really want to just pop all of my knuckles and, like, cough so bad, but I can't. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Midnight Oil, the only podcast dedicated to just coming back after four months of silence and pretending like nothing really happened. My name is Ryan Alexander Lee. Some people call me Ryan, some people call me Alex, but you can call me negligent for just not being able to find the melt. Uh, I'm joined here, as always, by my co-host, Ben Brandon. Ben, you pr- you proud of me? I found it. It's it's the lactose-free kind, too. Oh. Do they have that on the dairy aisle, or what? I'm a little, it's, a little confused. I, it's on the threshold of the dairy aisle and the not-dairy aisle. That's a dark place, really. That scares it's me. It's why it, it took me a very long time to discover that they had things in between the two. Uh, so, uh, man, uh, <laughs> that was cool when we did that last episode, like, a, a day ago, right, Ben? Wasn't that sure cool was, and fun? You know, it was, we went, we recorded an episode, you know, and then just, we were tired, we went to sleep, and boom, now we're here, we woke up, we're back, ready to record another episode. Yeah, That's what sleep deprivation will do to you. Nothing happened. Nothing at all. I, Your memory is as good as it always has been. Wait, wait, wait. My calendar's got this, a whole bunch of blank spaces in it, but it's, it's probably fine. It was probably Taylor I, Swift. She probably had something I would. to do with it. <laughs> we can't just blame Taylor Swift for all our problems, Ben. Ninety percent. Uh, take it or leave it. Take it or leave it, Ben. Um, it, you. I mean, speaking of looking at the calendar, this is a. It looks like a, a special occasion, maybe. It's... Has it been a, a year? You know, as as many great things are, this is our annual one year anniversary of the loving creation and inception of the one, the only, the Midnight Oil. True. It, it, it's a, it's a real crazy special occasion. Like, yippee, hip, hip, hoorays, all around. I can't believe we lived an entire year, and also rec- recorded cool podcast content. Um. Uh, and to celebrate, um, we we popped open a little bit of the champagne with the. The, the bubbly, you know. No, just a little, little bubbly to celebrate. We clinked and dinked. Not gonna, not gonna, you know, rub it in a bit. And and we have the visual proof to show it. Uh, I I thought it would be very uh, cool to get an artist's rendition of the of the conception of the podcast a year ago when we when we uh, smacked bubblies uh, and commissioned funny cool art man Deep Blue Ink to to do a, an artist's rendition of it. I think this guy is very cool. He does the podcast animations. So to have him make the us, but also drawing, I was like, yo, best, best money I've ever spent in my life. Check him out. He's very cool. And also check out the picture that we will put in the episode description. Um, it's very, very cool. It's a cool celebration. Ben, I'm, I'm so honored to have grown another year older with you. Uh, just saying random stuff at midnight. No, I... I truly have never been prouder to be a part of something in my life. And I played soccer when I was six years old, and we may or may not have lost most of our games, but we won one or two. And so... Hmm. This... With this podcast, it takes the cake. That's a lot. That takes... That's quite a bit of cake. Because I'm sure you ate a lot of, of po- post soccer cake, uh, oh. Victor. Um, and before we get to the Ben event, um, I, I'd just like to uh, to take a, another another brief look back. Uh, I'm really confused, and I hate editing things out, Ben. But I, I I think we'll do the looking back after the Ben Ultimate event, so I will cut this out. Okay, cool. God, we've we've really matured so much. Remember when I would have just left that in? 
Look how refined we are. True I still gentlemen. might. <laughs> That's right. Hey, Keeping you on your toes, audience. A little behind the scenes magic. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, Ben Ultimate Event. Does anyone get that that's supposed to be penultimate event, or is it just know. me? I didn't get it until you explained it to me. I don't think it had to be explained, but now that it is, it's maybe worse. You know what? It works. It, and it works in a way that it doesn't work, but we also don't work, so it's beautifully fitting to the theme. Hmm. It's wonderfully, like, dysfunctional to the point where, like, it doesn't make sense, but nothing we say really makes sense. But, like, there's a reason <laughs> behind it. So it's on We brand. may not understand, but there's a reason. True. It was a little short notice. I didn't have much time to think about it since the last last episode, but... Because it's, it's been so quick. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I... In the honor of the one-year anniversary... The, the dilemma that I have for you to ponder on today, Mr. Ryan, would be if you could have a podcast episode with your younger self, what would y'all talk about? Wow, that's a good one. That was a good one on such short notice, Ben. Um, is it, are you there too with your younger self or is it just me and... and and old alley bear i'll say we're both there but you get to choose the theme but okay what would make you and your younger self the most overjoyed to have a deep intellectual talk about oh goodness how much younger also if i may i know i'm i know i'm boggling i'm bogging down the question the spirit of the question by adding in these annoying stipulations um i would say i mean you can make it as young as you want. I was thinking somewhere probably like the 8 to 10-ish range, you know? As was I. We split the difference. Um, half, the, half the age. Um, wow. Uh, I don't know, because it's like... I think, I think people change a lot when they get older. In spirit, I really have not changed that much. Um... I may have have uh, gained a little more, a little more wisdom, um, in in my just a little in the in the ten years that have passed between nine year old me and, and nineteen year old me, uh, but really, he's he's not that different from the me that that is now, um, and for reasons I'll explain later on. Um, I think I think I'm having trouble getting myself in the headspace of nine-year-old me. Um, we we probably I feel like if we had a podcast with nine-year-old me, we would clash so hard <laughs> because we would both be interrupting each other to tell the same stories and the same dumb bits. It would not work. It would be, it would be, it would be like listening to two copies of me. Um, to be, to be honest, the topic would probably be about, if older me gets to pick, it would be about which one of us could kill each other in head to head combat. I would, I would be intrigued to see the results of that. Have you heard this this thought process? If you and your clone are trapped in the same room, which one of you would win? And it's like, well, he's your identical clone. Yeah, but he's a clone, and I'm the real deal. Fair enough. He doesn't have Fair any enough. of those pure street cred that I have. I think the thought process was because this clone of you is displaced, by X amount of molecules, like he's in a different position. He is therefore slight, like, cause some people are like, you're identical, you would, no one would win. It's like, oh, well this one's displaced by, it, it, you have, one of you has some sort of advantage based on positioning. Um, that only extends further in time, like if, if both of you go off, the further you two diverge, 
Um, I'm going to be honest, nine-year-old me would probably win. Nine-year-old me was a lot more ferocious and precocious. Yeah, I feel like, no offense, but nine-year-old you had a lot of just, like, raw talent and untapped, like, animosity that mm. has just kind of been beaten down in your old age. You know? True, true. <laughs> There were dreams. Um, not particularly grandiose dreams. But there were dreams. Oh, there were dreams. What about you, Ben? What is what is nine-year-old Ben uh, and modern-day Ben conspire in, in the podcast realm? Well, you see, I think nine-year-old me would be quite the opposite of you, and he would be absolutely overjoyed out of his mind to be on a any podcast especially one with future college version of me oh yeah but he's i would say the topic we would both talk about would probably be lego ninjago legos in general but specifically lego ninjago <laughs> i uh, briefly considered that as my topic just going over uh, you know set design of like the why Lego Ninjago sets are objectively the best mm. um, in terms of design, you know, fun of building, uh, and like the actual, like, you know, the cost effectiveness, and then also just the show. You got all the lore, who's gonna be the green ninja, you know, all, all that jazz. There's so much to talk about, and of course, I know, but I can't spoil that for him. Also, he would ask though. I wasn't even a Kai kid, but it should have been Kai. Personally, I was a big Zane fan. But like I I too enjoyed Zane. A man of culture. Jay unfortunately just did not have much appeal to me. He was very whiny. I always thought so too. I was like Kai was like too angsty and angry for me, and Jay was just kinda like too whiny. He tried too Jay tried too hard to be funny for my taste. True. Truly. Jay was a was a pick me, mm -hmm. and then it was not appealing. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Like he would have been like, oh 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 little Ben, what does the Ninjago series like? You you have no idea. We both look at each other and think about the movie. Oh so like, yeah, yeah. Like he doesn't know what's in store for him in the future. He thinks he's he thinks he's reached the pinnacle. Yeah. It'll also be fun to talk about one of the things that bothered me most as a kid. You know how they could do spin jitsu and they'd make a tornado, and then they could all like combine to make the mega like tornado of creation. I don't. Yeah, yeah. They Obviously. always changed the order of it, and like at one point, Sensei Wu was like, he literally said, "It is of the utmost importance that you get it right, or else like you will all die." And then they just go and change the order. It was like. And what, like, that episode was, like, fire, ice, earth, lightning. But then they, they just started, like, going literally whatever order they felt like. See, uh, I, I, wonder, I wonder about the mechanics of this podcast, because I feel like anything younger versions would have to say, like, would either just be stuff we were saying or stuff we would just be like, you're wrong, and you can't disagree with us on that because... We figured it out. <laughs> like, unless you can get an older version of us to say we're wrong, you, you don't hold any authority here. I don't know. We've never really come to any sort of academic consensus on this podcast. We usually just end up saying stuff is magic. That is a, a, the default. I don't know if I'm happy with that being the default, but I'll accept it's where we're at positionally. So I feel like my younger self would know enough to be able to pull that card on us and be like, well... You know. <laughs> he, figured, he, he could finagle that one. He reads the room. Uh, it's not a bad idea. We could farm clout off of communicating with the younger versions of ourselves. Okay, hear me up. What if we record like a podcast like we record ourselves and then like right a year now, from now we respond to ourselves like we managed to so find a way 
So do we do it right now and have the audience listen to half a conversation? Yeah. Or do we do it after the episode and then do it next year? I think I think it'd be after the episode. Okay. I think okay. I don't know. Stay I, posted. I'm not really understanding uh, the grasping the actual functionality of this, but I think it'll be I think it'll be funny. A year, year later, when we've forgotten what we said. Oh yeah, cause like it'll be like we we're just straight up talking with each other. Cause like we won't know what's gonna happen. With awkward pauses. Yeah. For us to fill in the space. Like we'll be like we'll forget like we'll think we're about to stop talking and then we just don't, and so like we'll start talking and oh it'll be a beautiful mess. And I'll apologize for interrupting future me. Yeah. Uh, good. Good times we we used to have. So I really didn't think this through. We'll, I guess we'll, we'll eventually pivot back around. Um, so today's episode, in honor of getting a year older, uh, today's episode, memories, all the things that build together to make us us. Ben, how, fa- how far back does that noggin of your goes? How far back do your memories coherently move? I can remember bits and pieces of when I was three years old. I specifically know that I was three years old because I can remember back when I lived in one Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And hmm. I moved from Murfreesboro to Birmingham when I was three. And so, I have a couple distinct memories of our house in Murfreesboro, therefore, three years old. Also, I was like, I know I wasn't, like, younger than three, because I was, like, able to walk and stuff, you know? And, like, be a semi-functioning toddler. That's pretty good. I'ma be honest, like... If you really stretched my brain, I could probably go back to three, but I said coherently, because... My memory is so bad. Like, I could probably tie together, like, a good, healthy memory maybe back to the age of, of 12. To the eighth, That's probably the 8th grade. Really? Th- that feels right. No, my memory is so bad. Like, obviously, if you asked me things, you could probably... I could probably piece it together. But it's like, name something you did when you were seven years old I'm like I don't remember what I was doing when I was seven years old I'd have to like work my way backwards that's that's not gonna be fun coming to college I'm not gonna lie to you you gotta remember <laughs> a lot of stuff is that all the people do is talk about what they did when they weren't at oh, college I'm just talking about class dude you uh, got, well, you're gonna have to take tests and stuff knowledge knowledge is retained in my brain pretty all right but like positionally two knowledges uh the plural the, the scientific of gorillas gorilla gorilla and uh yoda was based off of albert einstein that was some good knowledge that's from the weird but true fact books that i read when i was young when young I have no idea. See, I'm telling you, knowledge is retained. When the knowledge got into the brain, don't remember. And it's that can be a problem when, like, knowledge A came in and knowledge B countered knowledge A. I don't remember when I learned what. So I'm like, uh, wait, I've got these two opposing memories. Which one came later? See, I have that happen where it's like, I I can't, like, exactly remember, like, when I learned something or how, so it's like, I'll know a random, like, fact, that I'm like, I have no idea how I know this fact, you know? And it's like, I, I, I can't explain how I know a random, like, trivia fact or something, and like, but I just do. Yeah. It's like, don't, don't, don't quote me on that. Like, don't source me on that. My source is, I don't know, I probably might. Dude, we, uh, 
We went to, a, for those of us, those of you in the audience didn't know, we went to a Christian private school. Do you think we could have, we, we could have quoted like our sources in our papers as like citation, God told me so. Divine providence, I, I mean, depending on the teacher, there's a couple of teachers I'm thinking of that would have probably been our guide with it. Mike, fair game. Mike, it was divinely foretold in the land before time. Yeah, like yeah how, ones have been like, how are they gonna say no if I was like, yeah, this just came to me in a dream, in a prophetic vision. <laughs> Uh, that, that, that can't be right. It's sorry, sorry, Mr. Lazenby. It's uh, it's actually, it's actually nowhere in the official rule book that you that you can't you can't dock a student from divine providence. Ah, no oh, good. You know, they say the drinks bring back. All the memories, and the memories uh, bring back memories, bring back. But do you actually remember the twenty-first night of September? Uh, I can remember one twenty-first night of September. Really? That was the one this year. Because I didn't realize that it was, and I was at, I was at like a little swing dancing party thing. All my Auburn homies will know what's up. And someone started playing the song, and they're like, you know what time it is. And I was like, wait, wait. Oh my gosh, it is. It is. And my mind was blown, so. You know, um, since there's no smooth way to, like, segue this in, I, may I propose we, we, we look back on the memories of making the Midnight Oil for the past year then uh, teetering teetering on the the line of just becoming like we cannot just become a podcast about two dudes talking about their lives so like because like this isn't, that's all podcasts we're cool yeah. because we're quirky and different yeah so so we can maybe talk about the past year and the other memories that we've made and like how they've shaped us but like Remember, Ben, we're cool and different. The abstract concept of a memory is what we're here for. Yeah, it's something that's vaguely memory adjacent, such that, such that it, it, it could be like warped or distorted. Um, ben, what, which, which episode of the Mimonite Oil was your favorite to be a part of? I, for me, I think it was either Pony or Blanket. Mm. Pony, because it was, I mean, honestly, that was the first. Well, I'm pretty sure the viewers know that's the first. It was the most magical. Because for a, a little bit, things were out of order on Audacity. <laughs> on everything. And, yeah, and so, I, I don't know, it, it's fixed now, but... For a little bit, it was out of whack, but that was just so much fun because it was like, it was such a new territory, and I'd never done that before. And it was like, it was just so cool. And then I think Blanket may be my favorite, just one of my favorite episodes that we've recorded. Because like that was the first time we had someone just fall asleep on the podcast, and I don't know, that was just a really fun one. That was a good one. There was a raw comedic energy that uh, that we may have never tapped back into. That pony was just we just we were good. We had it, mm -hmm. and it may just be because that was one of the best topics I've ever come up with. Not to toot my own horn, um, and to and to everyone who was curious, I, I I just imagine we've been gone for like four months, and now people are getting like, oh, never heard of this. Now we're just talking about the podcast. Ah, <laughs> oh, so entertaining. Um, that that friend of ours, Kaylor, he falls asleep like when it's not midnight. Like he does not need an excuse to just conk out. He will just go down at literally any point. 
if you have any fun suggestions for ways for us to wake him up, because there's been many times he's fallen asleep. Once recently, we were playing board games, and he was just out while Alex was reading the instructions, and we were like, what do we do? So, if y'all have any like, fun suggestions for how to wake him up, leave it. Will Alex make him a little question? And is that the question? Go to the community area. Yeah. That's going to be our question. How to force Kayla to be awake. Good haha funny pranks. Uh, what we I have this cat toy that like the cat hates, so it's not really a cat toy, but like it just it's just like a a gyroscope that shakes violently. I was gonna go upstairs and grab it and just throw it at him, but he probably wouldn't have noticed. I don't know. I would be interested. I I really cannot picture what you're saying, being as I don't have a cat, but I'm intrigued. It's. It's a terrible cat toy because it is just there to agitate the cat. Like it just it just shakes like in multiple direction like um I don't know if there's a great way to illustrate this cuz like it's such a weird sensation. It's like if someone it, it's you know like the erratic movement of and it's a very specific feeling if you like spin a ball inside of another ball and you like get the you like shake the the big ball back and forth so that the inner ball is like going in multiple circles and you let go and it like it'll go up and down and all around because there's two types of spinning in it yeah that's basically that's i've just painted such a mind picture that's base basically what it is you know and it's just <laughs> it's just loud and <laughs> and it's the cat hates it but Taylor might love it. <laughs> we'll never know until we try. We will never know until we try. I gotta say, one of my favorites is probably present. Um, it just, it had a great holiday theme, but something about, like, Crawford, Crawford Merck's trying to tame the storm was really funny. And, and I don't know if I could have a favorite, but presence up there. And an underappreciated classic, if I do say so myself. I respect it. It's a respect, respectable opinion. Um, I, I believe it was... Was it the... I don't remember if it was... It was not the Pony episode. But on one of the episodes, I want to say the next one we did, where it was just us, which would have been Egg. I asked. So, in a year, when we look back at the year, we gotta make a, an obnoxious prediction about how popular we're going to be, because their value is based on numbers. Ben, I believe you said we hope to get like a thousand listeners? I think it was something like that. I, on the other hand, was much more bold and said, like, look, Ben, we got a good idea. Let's not shoot ourselves short. I said I think we could get 10,000. And, like, we got pretty close to 10,000. Pretty, pretty close. 9,000. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah. I yeah, mean, it was way more than I was expecting. It was pretty cool to see, you know, the response. Yeah, it was such exciting. a positive review. We really boosted our numbers in the in the the Mexican community. I think they really enjoyed the 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 salsa episode, which is of course um, the the snack episode just translated into Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> what am I saying? What? I, I, I'm a little concerned and confused, but sometimes I just commit. Uh, you know, that was a good bit. I will commit to it. I just wanted to. God, that was a funny one. Good one, boys. Um. Uh, next episode could be gaslighting. Um. I think I still think we've got a real a real dare I say you know tooting my own horn. I love 
the midnight oil. I think it's a beautiful blossoming flower. And I do not care about the numbers. But I think we could make, we could hit the stars, baby. I agree. The hardest part really is just traction. Like, I don't know. It's like, it's one of those things where it's like, how do, how do you get more people to find your podcast? I feel like, because a lot of it really would just come down to like people telling their friends about it, you know? Because it's like, I don't know. I don't have like a bunch of random podcasts just showing up in my Spotify recommended. Because it's nah. not like I mean, like YouTube or something where it's like you'll see a random new YouTube video and like check out that person's channel. I think it's a lot harder to gain new people, but once you hit a certain threshold, it's like boom, it starts taking off. Yeah, then like with the with the momentum. Yeah. And like what you're supposed to do is be like, hey, I made something and I'm super proud of this thing I made and would be very honored if you would look at it. But that seems super cringe. I'm not about to lie to you. Like, I know we give mixed signals because all I say is like, let's farm clout and get cash. I don't really, I, I do this because I think it's fun to talk with you, Ben. Uh, but like, I, I would like people to listen. So the one time I did it, <laughs> my coworker was like, bro, you suck. <laughs> you remember that? I told you about the egg episode. I, yeah. They were like, I remember that. You, t- you talked about eggs for 30 minutes. I was like, no, we talked about eggs for two hours. It's the egg episode. <laughs> what do you expect? What do you want? It's, get clowned on. You, you really get what you sign up for with us. <laughs> You, we, we hold a certain kind of complexity that comes full circle and it looks like stupidity. Uh, good, good memories. Ben, have you, have you made any, like, attempts to, like, try and, like, get people to listen to the podcast? Um, I told my friends in college about it. I don't know if any of them actually listened to it, but I... I, cause I did pull a card of like, yeah, I'm on Spotify, and you know, yeah, so. Hi, Ben's friends. Soon to hopefully be my friends, oh my gosh. True. What a, what a cool and awesome segue into the memories we're making now. Look at me go. I know how to run a pop, pop cast. Uh, so, little... I'm sure you guys cared so much about our lives right now. You guys are like, wow, these people are like probably the most uh, captivating gentlemen I know. Uh, Mr. Brandon went off to uh, pursue his further education. Well, I took a gap year um, and uh, not to be so bold and presume that we could, you know, have, have anything edifying to say but let's sustain disbelief for a moment how was how was how was the 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 memories you made in this new chapter of your life mr brandon it was fantastic 10 out of 10 best time of my life you know they say people say college is the best time of your life I don't know if that's true. I know it's been the best time of my life so far, though. Hopefully, it will continue to go up from here, but I can make no promises to future me. But, needless to say, it was awesome. Very cool. Very cool. I took the gap year. Not gonna lie, haven't ever done the college thing before. I highly recommend the gap year. The, The thing is that you gotta go in it with a plan. Like, you can't just say, like, I'm taking a year off. Because, like, you gotta at least have something. Um, Because for me, I had the plan, and the plan failed. But it, like, kind of got me to where I am now. Because I was constantly working towards something. You can't just be, like, free year off. Because it don't, it's not going to be the same. I am looking forward to pursuing uh, my pre-design major um, with uh, a certain 
Benjamin Brennan. Oh my gosh. Uh, same school, not same degree, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, it's going to be... We're going to throw down. It's going to be awesome. Gonna... It will be... I, I'm hesitant to say that it will be easier to do more episodes of the Midnight Oil because we'll both be in college and might make it easier to do schedules and stuff, but I'm also going to be taking a lot of really hard classes next semester. True. And, yeah. If there, was, if there was one thing I promised bad, it was that there are no promises. <laughs> it was very uh, Jeffersonian in that way. Which, it's very nice, because it's, you know, sometime in life, it is shockingly hard to be able to commit to something when you're, a lot of things in your life are just playing it by ear and going to do random things, and you don't know when you're going to be back. So, hey, the Midnight Oil is a wonderfully, wonderfully chill thing to be a part of. And that I love it, and it's always there for me, and I can always come back, come to it whenever I want, and it'll be there, ready and waiting for me. Ben, I'm gonna be honest, I feel a little guilty about literally just talking about the podcast that people are listening to for 40 minutes. Ugh. They oh, loved goodness. It. They loved it. They loved That was great. Great job. Great job, everyone. Applause is all around. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try real hard, like dig deep into my cranium, and pull out like the funniest memories I have. Um, did you know that I was very briefly a Boy Scout? No. Okay. I'm gonna have to really claw deep to like remember. I will guess and say, before my time at the Schminster, I will say I was in the th third or fourth grade, because that was when I was homeschooled. And I don't know the approximate age of a third or fourth grader. So we'll just say I was third grade years old. And if you've listened to this podcast, it does not take a lot to realize that I don't have a lot of Boy Scout based attributes. What had happened was, I wasn't doing anything. I was very bored. And I, I don't know if I prompted this, or mi madre, bless her soul, just wanted to get me outdoors. I think I like the ideas of having these little pins. So I was like, that's cool. Like, I'm catching them all, right? Yeah. But what I had failed to realize was being a Boy Scout involves going outdoors. That's a... That's a no-no. It's a no-no in my book. No, no, no. I... I don't remember what I did. Like... I remember I got a few little notches. Like, they weren't patches, they were like little metal things. The belt is probably like, was was probably like the size of your average bucket. I was about bucket thin. I remember getting the badges. The little nut, the notches, I guess is what you would call them. Buenos notches. Uh, nachos. I can't remember any, like, particularly funny memories. I just remembered, like, kind of realizing, like, wait a minute. These people, like, do things. This isn't like a pay-to-win club. <laughs> I just wanted, like, shiny badges. Yeah. I wanted, I was farming cloud. Yeah, you just wanted, the, like, the cool drip, you know, the sash. I think my mother may have realized that and like pulled me out. Um, I had made a couple of friends and then like attempted to do it again with like a, a off-brand Boy Scout. And like in this modern age of of like 
scoutless. I don't know. I don't know if they fully revoked the name Boy and Girl Scout. But I'm gonna be honest. I probably would have killed as a Girl Scout. Like, I don't know if that's a commentary on anything about me. But like, I would have sold mad Snickerdoodles. I believe. Oh it. my God. You have that's the heart of a businessman. See, I'm telling you, I have to like really dig deep. I do remember the one thing I did as a Boy Scout was sell popcorn. Cause like that's a thing they do. That's how they get their their mad money funds. And I don't remember what the first place prize was, but I remember I was like I like I grabbed my notebook like I was a bookie and I put on my like golf visor. I was like, yeah. Let's get this thing up, and I I waltzed around the neighborhood with my little my little wagon. It was like, hey yo, you want to buy some popcorn? <laughs> Eat it for the Boy Scout. I made. I don't remember. Oh, I did that too. I don't remember anything. But I mean, like you just went around and like said you want to buy popcorn. Oh, it's like and I made the fat dough and I passed it out. I ended up getting third place. And one of the options for third place was an alarm clock on wheels. Oh my gosh. It's like, it's terrifying. Like if you want to wake up to the feeling like you're getting hit by a car, because it, it, it wouldn't just make normal alarm sound. It would make the whirring sound of wheels and like drive around the room so you couldn't just like hit the snooze button. Yeah. But it would also make honking noises. <laughs> like if as if you didn't need a scarier thing to wake up to. Just go <laughs> Yeah, just like you're in the middle of like an intersection when you wake up. It's so bad. It's so bad. I did do a cart, a car, like a, a cart race too. That one, I, I did do one of those too. Not like a, like a, like a wooden cart. Like we carved it, me and my dad did, and we painted it. That's a good core memory. I can't believe I forgot that one. I don't, I think I disqualified, but like, I think the car is still in one of my boxes that I'm packing up for, for college. <laughs> that was a good, a good story time with Y and Alexander Weed. I was very impressed that I was shook. I had no idea that you were a Boy Scout at one I, point or time. I, I don't think it, that counts. Like that you can't. Count. It doesn't. Like That's going I have. Resume. I have the rain jacket to prove it. I think my brother owns it now because my body shape from the third grade, like my torso, has not. Uh, my chest has not changed. My legs have gotten infinitely longer. But like this upper area it still vaguely fits like it's a little small but that's from like 11 or 10 grades ago so ben ben why don't you i don't want to i don't want you to go like too deep we are don't forget Ben. we are recording gosh what's like a what's a secret little known thing about about ben deep in the memory folds huh I I used to absolutely love monster trucks. And now what you're thinking, Ben, what was your favorite monster truck? Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, it was Gravedigger, because he was cool. Also kind of scary, because it was all, like, monsters and stuff. But you know what? I was a brave little child. And so I was a big fan of monster trucks and I had like all the little toy monster trucks you know they were just miniature versions of monster trucks and I don't I don't know if you know this but like monster trucks is basically like the WWE but there's like there is certain like named monster trucks I guess like the, there's different ones and like there's the good ones and the bad ones and they like go and do their monster truck thing and so I, I was all into it and I had like the little toy versions of all of them and I would just play with them all the time until until my, my dad being the awesome great best dad ever to exist that he is was like okay Ben 
I'm gonna take you to an actual monster truck rally. And I was like, <laughs> what? This is the coolest thing ever. I'm going How to How old were you, may I ask? Very young. Probably <laughs> like eight. That's no, no, probably awesome. like six. That is so cool. No, it was amazing. Until I got there. And it was so loud and terrifying. I absolutely hated it. Because oh, I no. was a wimpy little child and I hated loud stuff and like it was terrifying and like you know it was like I don't know if you've ever been to like a NASCAR or anything like that I haven't but I've heard it smells it smells like gasoline and you know and it's like it smells very strong and super loud and it was it was too much for my small child senses to handle and I was I was shook out of my I was I just couldn't handle it definitely so, overwhelmed yeah, from that point on, I my deep love for monster trucks began to fade. That is so sad. That's a shame. An absolute shame. I'd like to imagine your father was like, he definitely wore like a button up, not too fancy to this monster truck rally. And like, you were surrounded by dudes with like big flip back hats. They're wearing mud flaps on their shoulders, slamming beer cans against each other's heads. That's that's about the crowd. You you, you got them. <laughs> I got them. I, I understand the monster truck uh, economy. I know what the market's like. Uh, that's unfortunate. You two were going against your true nature, which was anti-monster truck. Mm -hmm. I loved the ideas of monster truck, but I just could not handle the actual like in practice version. You like of the monster conceptual truck. idea of a monster yeah. truck. Like, what cool, wonderful. big car, drive, do cool jumps and stuff, but when it, when it came down to it, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't take the heat, so I had to get out of the kitchen. Unfortunate. An unfortunate time. So, like, would your perfect monster truck, like, be like an electric monster truck? Yeah. Low emission quiet uh, honestly it, it did would it you get all of the carnage with none of the uh, the noise pollution mm-hmm yeah with none of the ill side effects and the environmentally friendly nature yeah get on that musk electric monster trucks she you know, the real monster was gas all along it was carbon and emissions fossil fuels. that was Truly. the real monster truck I got another one I remembered so um, I don't know things but I'm going to assume upward is a very local establishment probably southeastern but it was a it was a sports camp uh, that that was there to get you to to play i mean it, it was like a it was a, I, i'm sure upward did things other than soccer or football for our for our mexican audience um uh, wait is that right pause the story i think it's just like everyone except for us calls it football. okay but i don't know we, i know okay. for sure it's european yeah i know i knew it was european and i presume asia as well uh, I don't think Asia is pretty uh, preoccupied with with uh, soccer. No, they definitely. No, that's that's South America. What do they do in the middle? Well, when we translate this to Spanish, it'll, we'll cut this part out. Um, so, uh, soccer. I played a little bit of soccer, and uh, I do think I was eight. This one. It was. It was. This was. Boof. I don't know when this pertained to the Boy Scout thing, but I wasn't doing it at the same time. And it was, it was like your local sports thing, just split up by age. I think that they may, like, I know I, get, I went up against other upward teams, but I don't remember if they were, like, from different areas. I want to say they just arbitrarily split us up. Um, and we, like, I did this a lot. I played defense, um, not because I was particularly defensive, but it just meant, like, I stood behind low movement and whenever something came near I just that was my time to shine I was just like yeah to just kick it wherever 
was in the opposite direction. It was awesome. I was so good at it. Just like walk around and like, oh, they're coming at me. Kick. Because I, I was not a closer. I was, uh, I was not a closer. Uh, but, you know, as I sort of advanced in my, in my soccering wisdom, um, you know, the coach was like, you know, let's get you in there. Little Alex. And, ah, I don't know, coach. I don't know if I can do this. And like they would put me on offense, and I was decent at it for an eight-year-old. I would get to the end, and I would flounder. Like I would get right to the goal. I was like, eh. and it would just like it would it would miss. That was that's the side of what an eight-year-old sounds like when it's kicking. Not nothing else. <laughs> um, uh, and my mother, you know, she, she would sit and watch and cheer me on. She said, "Mr. Ryan Alexander Lee." She goes like, I know you got this, didn't you? You're a very mind over matter uh, child. I was like, no, mom, I'll, I'll never score a soccer goal, and I'll never, I'll never get us to the championship. She goes, Mr. Ryan Alexander, if you score one goal in this game, I will buy you just up the road, Moe's Southwestern Grill, entire cup of Moe's Southwestern Grill queso. And this was one of the, like, the final opportunities before the lactose intolerant gates were permanently shut and I couldn't rip beautiful, gaseous mm -hmm. melodies um, into the air. The dairy like, ah. doors would soon be closed. Yes. So you need to understand, like, the, like, even my mother knew this was, like, the fight. Like, we were, cut, we were cutting it. We were cutting it out of the intake. This is one of the final moments. An entire cup of queso to myself. And we were at the little, the little, you know, field, like right, real night, right close next to it. Um, so it comes to the final inning, which is exactly what, that's what happens in soccer innings. Um, and, and like, I, I'm on the side, I'm like, I'm dribbling it down. I'm coming along the line. And I've got like the entire opposite team walling me into the, like the rightmost side. Like, I'm almost at the corner kicking area. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm going in slow motion. I can see the shot. I can see that I cannot make this shot. But there's no more time. There's no one I can kick this to. I might as well send it. I give it the, like, most beautiful spiral kick I can. Tippy-toe ballerina style. Like, poof. It does one of those... And it heads over, and it's like, it's, it's not out, like, it's, it's heading towards the goal, but it's, it's like, you're in missing shot territory. Even the goalie do this. And then it hit the inside of the rim of the goal and bounced in. I was like, ugh. Land it. Like, I, I, I was air bud levels of good at soccer. Um, With and then they all... The light. I know, like, I was like, this was it. I don't recall if we won, but I won. <laughs> yeah. I was playing a different game. And then I got the cup of queso, and everyone said, like, Alex, that was the best shot I've ever seen in my five days of playing soccer. Thanks, Gerald. High five. We got the Moe's queso. I was like, ah. Oh. And then we climbed the big Moe's tree that was really big and mm. probably a safety hazard. Um, that was a fun tree to climb. Good. I'm glad you experienced the same tree-based action. So yeah, I was also a soccer, uh, uh, soccer uh, micro celebrity. Oh. Do you want to hear my uh, one of my fun soccer memories? <laughs> no. Fair enough. No. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry, Ben. No, no. I just... You, Memories you, permanently lost. Gone forever. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry. Memories yeah. deleted. Everyone will just have to wonder. No! <laughs> okay, uh, what can I do to make this up? This harsh injustice, cruel injustice. What can I do to make this up to you, Ben? Be a good and heartfelt listener. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm sitting crisscross applesauce. So, there I was, playing Briarwood soccer as every young child that grew up in the area that I did 
did. Mm. And, you know, I was, I was a, a reasonable, reasonably decent soccer player at my age. You know, I could, I could kick the ball and only fall over some of the times. <laughs> so, there was this, this one instance, you know, we were, we were running up. It was one of those times, you know, it was like, the team we were playing, they, they weren't all that. And so, we were, you know, running up. I got, I got put on off, offense. I, too, was usually a de- defensive boy. Okay. But this time, you know, like, I actually played goalkeeper for a while, but... I could see that. That's a story for another time. Then the goals got bigger, and I did not, and so I stopped playing goalkeeper. <laughs> Understandable. But... I was playing offense, you know, and then I ended up, you know, scoring, you know, nice little, nice little shot straight into the back net, and Hello. I'm walking back, you know, my family's all there watching me, because, you know, this is the biggest event of their lives, and, you know, I'm like, all right, this is cool, you know, I gotta, I gotta really, do, like, dwell in this victory, so I hit him with a quick little somersault forward roll as I'm walking <laughs> back down the field. <laughs> And my parents yes. had to like pull me over like, okay, Ben, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't just be out here flexing on people. Okay, like, so like you you scored one shot out of like the the entire game. Wasn't even that pivotal. <laughs> and you had everyone's attention and you just did like a little roll. Yeah. <laughs> and your parents like, oh god. Ben, you can't, like, you can't, so, you so can't I start one. A good lesson about humility that day. <laughs> I think that's incorrect. I think you styled too hard, and you learned a good lesson about plebeians. You can't do it to them like that. It's not humility. That's 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 sacrifice. You just outs some people real hard. <laughs> this this. This somersault is like such a good way to go though. It like it doesn't say lot it doesn't say a lot about you other than like you've taken command of the attention. Yeah. It, a little like eight year old me, he was a he was a player, he knew what he was doing. It's not even like Like could you imagine could you imagine it's the twenty twenty two games. Brazil versus uh, uh, Italy. I think those two are very good. Like, and Guillermo de Tolo, after scoring the winning roll, the winning the winning shot, just does a little front roll. <laughs> it would be so sick. You can't tell me that it would make the goal that much more satisfying. He's just a little. He like moves the goalie out of the way and he rolls into the goal. <laughs> Stands up because like I've seen people do the arms. But they're like they've they've got them extended out and they like they're signaling towards them. I've seen like the like the chest bump and like the kiss. No one's just rolled. Lost. They stopped no all their momentum. No one as as bold as I was, you know. Just immediately get down on their knees. Slow front roll. Stand back up. Ah. The 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 Giatelli spin. Oh, so good. That's that's one for the memory books. That's a good, that's a good one. Ben, do you remember the first time we met? I kind of do. Good, because I was gonna be really worried if you said like, "Do you remember the first time we met?" I'd be like, N- "No," and then be like, "Oh, it was very pivotal." Because I'm trying to piece together. We were in the same fifth grade homeroom class, I believe. Yes, we were. Yes. I came halfway through the year. I want to say it was a Moe's Southwestern Grill when my mother was like, I, I think we're committing to the Schminster. It's like, okay. Um, and so like, I, I come halfway through and I know the first person I like really met was Mr. Steenwijk from the chicken episode because he was the person I followed around to get a, a okay. feel of the school. Um, 
I thought from watching like the little there was one promotional video of like these from the like the eleventh grade at the time. So I couldn't even tell you who they are. I was like, these are a bunch of prissy tea drinkers. They're gonna like I don't know use etiquette and stuff and I'm gonna look like a I'm gonna look like a hobo. And then like the first horrible teacher I met was like ape wild. That man was crazy. Yeah. He was something else. He was quite in the best way possible. I know some people have terrible experiences with teachers, but for the most part, I can't complain about the mo two teachers come to mind. But other than them, um no. Uh Great, great fifth grade homeroom teacher. I'm trying to think, like, when was the most distinct memory I have of of the Ben, the Ben experience? I really don't know. I just like, cause like, there came a point where like, I can. Uh, there was a distinctly Benless period of my life, and then there was like a very short period where I was like. I don't know this person. But then after that short period, it was like, Ben has always been there. Ben is a, Ben is Ben. It's like, it's hard to describe. Ben, you would understand because you're Ben. Um, yeah. It's like, it's like once, once you go Ben, you never go Ben. Um, it's just like, Ben, Ben's the type of man where it's like, he, he he feels like he's always been there. It's like... Never go back. I can't think if there was like a distinct moment where I was like, this guy's cool. Because it was always like that. Except for the, like, maybe like half a year build up where I was like, I don't know this person, he seems cool. This is like, now it's like... Five. Yeah, that's like, that's how I feel. Cause I can definitely remember like, little baby version of you but i can't and like you as well i can't exactly put my finger on like when i was like i bet i'll say the most the most distinct memories that i can think of you right now obviously there was the time that i can think i can remember you making origami a lot I remember that, you that was a dark that was a dark period in my life uh that, uh, I don't know, I think, I think I, I think if you had, if you had mentioned that two, maybe one year ago, I would have been deeply ashamed. Now I'm like, no, that kid was cool. And, uh, and I'm like, I'm literally like right on the verge of that. I'm like, there, there's a past memory of me that's like, oh, cringe. And I'm like, no, no, that man was happy. He needs yeah. to come back. <laughs> It was a simpler time. Mm -hmm. I do also, I remember, okay, oh, I, I had another one. Okay, I had an earlier memory. I remember you making the locker bank. Mm. Okay, so for people who obviously did not go to school with us, a guy who was in our grade, in seventh grade, left. And Alex, you know, there was now an empty locker on our row of lockers. Alex then proceeded to make a bank out of this where he would charge people interest and they could take out like <laughs> m money to go spend in the vending machine to get food. Yeah. But but the, the the way it started was because someone left a nickel in in this dude's old locker as a dedication to him as a shrine and this guy's locker was right above me because he had the last name uh uh, that was just like slightly above mine so I was like I took this opportunity to just steal his locker and like I didn't de I didn't like donate the funds to him I just donated it to like making more money um, I think at the end like at, from 10 cents I made $14 um, I don't remember what I spent the money on I think I think I like framed it I did make a I did make a bank it was extremely impressive, like, the, the dedication was real. 
Now, Ben, do you... Okay, this has got to be the most distinct memory. Like, at, at least, like... I don't, I don't want to say it started here. This is definitely when, like, our, our, uh, adventures, like, this is probably where we would start the Midnight Oil movie. Do you remember in the eighth grade, Miss Logan's Latin class, our slideshow presentation yep. adventure? You best believe I remember the greatest oh. freaking project of all time. That thing was killer. So, um, the idea, I don't even remember what the prompt was. We were supposed what, to make a game based off of some, like, mythological Right, thing. because it was Latin class. I knew it had to be involved in mythology. And I think, like, everyone was like, haha, we're going to make a board game. And I love board games. But I was like, Ding, no, no, no. We're, we're going to be cool, Ben. And I don't know where, I guess it came from like the old Flash troll games. Cause it was like, dude, these, this guy's funny. He's got a funny face. But we made like a, a point click in slideshow, like in, in Microsoft <laughs> yeah. PowerPoint, a point click adventure game where like I manned the screen and like I couldn't figure out how to do health bars so I think you manned the stats yep and like my plan was to A like play this game but B um B just like take up as much class time as I can so that we don't have to do class Ben right next to me my left hand is on it I still have this big like D die D6 you made it's, yep. it's in my right hand I was literally about to say, I think that was the most, like, the biggest thing that I actually contributed to that project was making the dice. Ben, you were definitely there in, in spirit, uh, as was cultivating. Uh, but I do have this problem where I will just, like, have bursts of inspiration. Uh, so I, I don't know if I commandeered the project. Uh, but it was pretty baller. Oh, that was so much fun. Man. I also distinctly remember from that project you being like, because one of the enemies was like a centaur, and you're like, hmm, looking up pictures of centaurs is very dangerous because they're all shirtless. True. Um, I don't remember what I saw, but that sounds like me. Of like, oops. So you like put the like an image of like a little child baby centaur. Like, yeah, I guess my worry was like I would get in trouble for putting like hunky centaur boys. Um, I think I remember this memory of like, oh, these guys are these guys are beefy, and uh, we wouldn't want to be a temptation to our sisters in Christ, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I guess I, I was on thin ice because I do also remember what I what I when I uh when I told that teacher uh, I thought she was a, a sexist so that was pretty funny too mm -hmm. good wholesome times we have on this podcast uh, we we have we have since uh, made up uh, Miss Latin teacher and I but uh, oh good times good good times man that was I, was so I have not thought about that project in so long I don't know if I still I might still have it. <laughs> we drop it in the... So if you guys want to play along at home... Uh, <laughs> you can just like click through the slides. <laughs> <laughs> uh, missing, missing all of like the paper elements. Yeah. Like I don't know what's going on, but... You know, I think I do have it. Because I was looking through like old... I swear I have this. I'll put in like a Google Drive. <laughs> I, I want to see that thing. So, I want to see that so Cause bad. Because I remember, like, the fonts weren't right when I moved it over to Apple's PowerPoint. It's, it'll definitely be in the description. Oh, my gosh. Memories. Ugh. Everyone can see our handiwork. <laughs> oh, they can see what eighth grade version of us, what we were thinking. Getting a little insight. Oh, I, I think just remembered... Do you remember another Latin project? We made a movie. 
Uh, yes. Yes, we did. I still because have the videos from that on my phone. Oh, uh, <laughs> still in your. Yeah. I remember. I remember that movie. I. It was the beginning of my cinematic career. Um. That was a. That was a good. It was a good movie. I don't think there was as much like funny haha meme stuff. Remember, I remember our two other, the feminine, uh, our feminine compatriots, who also a part of the film. Uh, they were having fun. I think we ended up just beating each other with a cane. Yeah, I, I remember that happening. And that was funny. Because see, what, what I, this is, and this is cheating, but, I, but what I also remember, which I don't know if I have a copy of it being particularly funny, was me and Kaylor. We we did from our Latin. So in Latin class, it hot take. Apologies to any Latin teachers listening to this. Uh, it was not the most fun of classes, but I think in, in an attempt to give a little bit of of jubilantness to the to the the class, both Latin teachers we had would have us translate our own story so as long as you did it vaguely in latin you were good <laughs> i remember kayla and i did like like the three hamsters from hell and like made a story about mm -hmm. like because we had to do like monsters so like three hamsters from hell that were like sacrificed over a dvd of shrek and we just put like every like dumb brained idea and combined into the stupidest story we've ever but for some reason it was just so much fun oh. and now that classic uh, classical education has me singing the lyrics to the Super Smash Brothers Melee song and you can probably kind of recognize some of the words somewhat hmm What other shenanigans did we get up to? I don't... Um... And I feel like, I mean, we, we really didn't have a ton of classes together. I feel like, like we... Ninth for, oh, you're... Tenth, eleventh grade range, I feel like, you know? Maybe so. I, I know you took anatomy, and I did not take anatomy, but that was like later on. We had all our math classes together because we were big brain. Well, we didn't. You had Mr. Reynolds. I did. Didn't you? you guys left to watch Napoleon Dynamite. We got to pay for monochords that didn't get built. <laughs> we did just get scammed uh, by our math teacher. Um, I asked our uh, Mr. Chambliss. Uh, uh, very, very smart man. Uh, what happened to that monochord money? He's like, I don't know, it just disappeared. I was like, okay, sure, Mr. Chambliss. Sure it did. We'll sustain all, all disbelief. Yeah, the money just flew into thin air. I'm sure you pulled that scam multiple times. Uh, yeah. It's the infinite money glitch. Truly. Um... I do remember uh, the one boys' night where um, I was not told what was going on, and very this was like twelfth grade year, so like this was not that long ago, and like Miss uh, Mr. Smith goes, "Hey, hey Ben, do you want to help me get this chair from the upstairs?" And you're like, "Yeah," and I'm like, "I could help." He's like, no, nah, Ben's cool. And then all of a sudden, like, everyone just starts moving. Like, where are we going? <laughs> so I just follow. And then we go into a different room, and we start hiding. And then Mr. Ch the other teacher, Mr. Smith, is like, ah, the chair must be in this completely separate room. And then everyone's like, pops out. It goes, surprise. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I figured it out it was a surprise for you at that point. Um, but... That that video is still on my phone, uh, of the surprise birthday band party. That I that had me completely like I had no idea. Like I don't know why I didn't think it was like literally not at all suspicious. That like I was just like yo, 
I need help to go move a table. But I was like, yeah, that that seems reasonable enough. Okay, but this teacher, it it's so hip. I think what was more surprising was the fact that he wasn't like giggling the whole way over. Yeah. I'm like, just you close your eyes, man. <laughs> uh, good, good memories. Uh, another top tier Brandon Lee exploit memory it was the only concert I've ever been to and probably will ever go to. Um, 20. It was not. No, this was. This was pre-COVID. Was it pre-COVID? It was it pre-COVID. Had, so this would have, this would have had to be 2019, wouldn't it have been? I think it was. 2019. University uh, of Alabama, Birmingham. I actually don't know what UAB stands for. That's uh, University of Alabama in Birmingham. In Birmingham, Weezer concert. The first concert I've ever been to. Uh... Mr. Brandon pulled all the strings and got us at the literal front. I think I was two heads away from sniffing Mr. Weezer's toes. That was awesome. Dude, that was so much fun. It was so a very cool. cool night. Like, it's hard to describe how amazing it was. It was mostly just the fact that it was with the boys. It was like, yo. I am watching like 50 year old men sing about songs for like 20 year old men and I'm living the dream. I don't think there were pyrotechnics there, but my heart saw pyrotechnics. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was what got me into concerts. It's like, that was the first real concert I'd ever been to. I had been to another UAB concert before and I was not a particularly big fan because it was a country concert. Mm. And at that point in time, I did not really like country. And once again, it was loud. This was still somewhat in my I don't like loud stuff phase because I'm a whiny little goo goo ga ga baby. <laughs> uh, but that, yeah, that concert was, I was like, wow. Maybe this whole concert thing, there's something to it. I don't know if I'll ever go to another concert, to be honest. Like that, it's it's sort of it's sort of out of principle that like I don't want anything to compare to the the sanctity of that night. Okay. Uh, Weezer. Those they had like an unbelievably good stage presence like dude they were it was awesome so I good was, i don't know if it's just all the memes but i was definitely expecting them to be like a lot more like i don't know just like awkward and stuff but they were like so entertaining they were great i loved it when they they sang their hit song uh africa so True. so so good it's, the peak of my life. I loved it when they wrote that song and then composed it and then sang it. I, I loved it when they then followed it up with the Cars 2 classic, You Might Think. That was so cool. <sighs> so like as a complete like 1280 pivot do you think in the future and i'm positive this is a black mirror episode already we'll have the ability to edit memories in our noggins i i think so i mean i don't know if that's in in our lifetime future but i could totally see that happening how do you feel about that, Ben? How does it feel? How does it sit in your gut? Um, I don't know. I'm I'm personally not a big fan. 
like I have a hard enough time keeping stuff straight as it is. And even if stuff kind of sucks, I wouldn't remember things for how it was, you know? True. Because, like, things that suck now... I mean, obviously there are some things that are going to stay sucky, but it's like... I don't know. Things that were awful, I look back on it and I'm like... Those were good. Not great. They were... It was good. Yeah. There's just that, there has not been anything in my life that I'm like... I wish that I didn't remember that or I didn't remember or like that I remembered it differently like I can look back on like everything and be like yeah maybe it may have been rough at the time but we made it through and we made it out better because of it probably kind of you, you we hope I th I think that's the plot of Suns uh, sun spot sunshine of the spotless Eternal mind. I think I said that right. Yeah. Kayla will get mad at me for, for. He likes that movie a lot. It's got Jim Carrey. And now I'm going to recite the plot of that entire movie because you didn't know it already. That was cool. I just did it. Good cut. I don't know. It seems to be like. That what people do with the memories in the future is like you're going to be able to edit them and the police are going to be able to come through them and I'm like you got to have a warrant there buddy you got to have a brain warrant mm -hmm. it's like imagine if like I don't know it's like what if like you could just like randomly just like walk up to someone and just be like I think you don't remember anything today just like put up a really big magnet, like. Yes. And you're just oh, like, oh yep. the fry the you chips in your brain. Memory privileges. <laughs> like Dory. All right, you've you you gotta pay your memory bills. You're way over. I don't have any money. Uh oh. Uh oh. Could you could you sue someone? Be like, I didn't remember to pay my memory bills because I didn't have memory privileges. Problem would be would be remembering that. Yeah. The help would be remembering you have the right to an attorney. Right. Man that has dementia for, forgets he has dementia. Cured! Hmm. It would really suck though, like, not being able to remember stuff. That'd be weird. I. I, I imagine it's very scary, like, because having worked in a, a retirement home, I don't, I don't think I ever saw it, but, like, I think there was one person that, like, okay, because that's not true, like, I, I knew there were people that had dementia. I think once you get it, you're, like, blissfully unaware, because for the most part, if you remembered, you forgot something you forgot about it pretty soon. Yeah. But there were the people that were, like, moving towards it, and that was a little sad. Because, like, they know they should know something, but they don't quite have it, and they get frustrated. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. It's, just, it's not that big a deal. Ugh, it's so sad. Mm -hmm. But... But then there's the like funny ones that are like, I've probably told you this before, but you remind me of my granddaughter. I'm like, uh, is she Asian? Yeah, how'd you know? Like, you've... I'd say it's racism, but it's because you've told me 12 times. And she goes, right, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, those kooky old people. They're so funny. They are pretty funny, most of them. I, I kind of can't wait to be old and be able to just, like, tell people all the stories and stuff and lectures. It seems fun. I don't know if I'll have any by then. <laughs> like, I have such a bad memory. I'll tell them for you. I'll make something I, up good. That's the thing. I could, I'm sure if one prompted, I'll be, like, the old person that, like, just keeps rambling because it's not like I had a plan. It's like I remembered one thing and I just have to keep going. Um, yeah. 
Otherwise, I'll, I'll lose my momentum and, and it'll all be gone. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm going to be a big fan of the back in my day. <laughs> like, honestly, even now, I've been tipped to be like back in my day. Because, like, I don't know if you can remember this, but I can remember, like, before, like, iPhones were popular and, like, a thing. It's like, I can remember my parents having, like, a Blackberry. And, like, we're probably going to be the last people to ever remember that. We're going to be, like, the last generation. For sure. Like, we, we, we are, we are so consumed in screens. I, I was, that was, like, a huge part of our family. So, like, I think I, like, it. Like I when I when it came into existence, I don't know. I like it felt like it was cool, but not new. So like, like the boom, I guess when I realized it was there, I was like, oh, it's been it's been a while. I guess, I don't know. It was weird because like it wasn't a part of our family, but like when I noticed it, it was it had been a while. It was yeah. weird. But but definitely like I have like vague memories of like wait a minute like. I wasn't like a, that wasn't a thing. iPods. Yeah, Cause we got, we got an iPod, but before that we had the, um, little music thingy, what's it called? I think it was called an iPod too. I don't really know. An I, I was it I mean, Shuffle? They, yeah, they, they had an iPod shuffle. shuffle. It looked that, like I think a, that's it, what it was. Like kids, imagine, the Apple TV remote and that's what an iPod was. Yeah, pretty much. But we had like yeah, even... we had that and I was like, whoa. Music. Crazy. <laughs> I remember with my dad's with my dad's iPhone maybe three or four. Accidentally purchasing an entire Minecraft parody album and not just the song I wanted. I was so <laughs> ashamed. Cause I was like, that's, that's my dad's good hard money I just spent on my Minecraft parodies when I, I just wanted Creeper Creeper and not the whole album. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I, I let, but I, I, I wore out the, that's part of my hard drive. Just like absolutely cranking those tunes. Like, Minecraft style. I'm gonna get DMCA'd by Psy. Minecraft I did that so much. I listened what to so it? many Minecraft parodies. Dude, like modern, modern music, and not music, modern Minecraft music, so bad. This is a better time. It's it isn't what it was once back in the day. It, back in the day, and it's you know what I've wanted to do is like I've wanted I've I have every once in a while like open up the old archives and watch like the old Minecraft YouTubers I've watched and it's terrible because like 90% of them have had some sort of allegation and it's just like I can't look at them the same yeah it, it's rough it's, it's not pretty it is it's weird if only I had if I had made an emotional attachment to, to Captain Sparkles no he just I watched Jerry's Tree on, on the iPad. I was a Dan TDM guy. Fair enough. I didn't do that either. I was, I was uh, Sky the Kid RS, and that, I think it was because he said words that I had never heard before. Uh, it, it, it was luring. I was seduced, seduced by the funny big adult words. Adult words. Adult words are pretty cool. I still don't know a lot of them. I am a little worried. They'll sneak up on me with like a new adult word. Like, oh god. Uh, I promise I'm cool. I know things, right? New word just dropped. <laughs> oh, here we go. New word out? Passamaquoddy. Yo. Good one. So, how do you feel about, like, so much of the 
entertainment today, just playing on, like, memories and nostalgia and all that, and, like, constant just, like, sequels and all that. Um, I don't think it's particularly bold of, of me to say that, like, I do wish we had new IPs, but have you seen new IPs? Like, they kind of suck. Like, yeah. T- to quote Crawford Merck, they've used all the good stories. Uh, like, uh, they, I, I think back to like the Abominable Yeti. I don't know if you remember, like DreamWorks made like a, like a Yeti. Um, like it's just so bad. Oh, and then there was why is it Yetis? Because there was a different Yeti movie. Now that I can think about it, with like Zendaya and James Corden. Oh, I'm a Yeti. Oh, it's me, Zendaya. Yetis are not. And and what what it is is big companies will only fund things that they know will get money, and they know that previous franchises. So I I'm kidding, but but yeah, I mean like, have you seen the the things that they greenlight? It's it's not great. It's not great. No, I'm not a. It's like I know it's empty because they're just farming my nostalgia, but some of them have been pretty good. Uh, Lightyear, I'm excited for. That is just farming nostalgia. Uh, Incredibles was kind of mid. Trying to think of something that was just like a directly like, like just so blatantly there to to feed off of past memories. And I would argue Star Wars, the new Star Wars movies. Yeah, yeah, definitely the TV shows where it's like, uh, we're gonna play the theme of the the, the guy. I so how did you watch the Star Wars movies? We had like the six pack of the all the DVDs. Mm-hmm. And they sat in the back behind our little bucket of all the movies, and they sat next to our collection of the Lord of the Rings movies and our collection of all the Harry Potter movies. Good collection. Uh, what I, I my mother swears she she showed them to me the right way, but am I? I like I remember very distinctly watching them the wrong way and it may have been my father's fault uh, because I watched them once again if I had it if I could have chosen I would have not watched them one two three four five six but that's how I watched them so like spoiler alert plug your ears now if you don't know Star Wars in the fifth episode when Darth Vader's like no I am your father. No! I was sitting there like, is this some, supposed to be some sort of thing? This is obvious. I was so confused. I was like, what? what is this? Obviously, that's Luke Skywalker. We all know that big metal dude's Anakin Skywalker. I'm not dumb. I can put two and two together. I was. I did not get it. Especially because it was four, five, six. Like I had no reason to believe four, five, six was made before one, two, three. That's stupid. That's not how numbers work. I've spent like years, years of academy training wasted. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you mean it's four, five, six, one, two, three? Uh, but no, it really did kill. Like, because my brother watched it the right way, and he was like, <gasps> and I was like, what? What, what is this? <laughs> You Obviously, I was robbed. I cannot wait to see the like the. I would love to have children and and do this the right way, um, and sh- and show them Star Wars the right way, which is, four, five, six, one, two, three. Row one. Seven. Nine. You don't watch eight. You never watch eight. <laughs> you don't watch eight. You maybe watch Solo if you're really desperate. I mean, I would be all right if they just watched Seven, to be honest. I'm not a huge fan of the modern Star Wars movies. I'm not either. Did she end up being just like a random 
I don't remember who she was, Ray, because that was like a thing. And then, like, I think in the ninth movie, I vaguely remember Kylo being like, "You're no one. You dumb." Yeah, she ended up being Palpatine's granddaughter. Right. Which I was like, weird. And then Ooh. also, Palpatine was like a clone, but alive, but dead, but. Uh, no, who be I, who be hitting that Palpatine? That's what I wanted to know. And where who, Palpatine Jr. at? Oh. Honestly. I was yeah. So confused. Not a, not a fan. Not a fan of the modern, the modern Star Wars dub movies. But Obi Wan. The new hit series coming, series finale. Actually, I don't think the series finale is coming out. Oh, uh, right, because it's 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 releasing on the on the anniversary. We're not we're not recording this a few months in advance. Um, Obi Wan was good. At, I really liked it in the ending. Spoiler alert: when uh, when Anakin and Obi Wan uh, uh, fist bumped and did the Fortnite floss. True. I liked it when they killed off Leia because she's annoying. <laughs> it's also very true. Gosh, I cannot stand. I don't. I don't like Leia. I know she's she has just, to live. She's the ultimate problem child. Truly and honestly. But Darth Vader really did pop off, especially when he cut off Obi Wan's left arm. And they had mm -hmm. to replace it with Anakin's left arm. And they force sewed it together. I'll tell you what show is amazing though. Star Wars the Clone Wars. The seventh season the seventh season is fantastic. The Bad Batch? Uh no. Well, yes, Bad it's Batch Bad is very Batch. good. But there's they made a seventh season of Star Wars the Clone Wars. Oh, Bad Batch is the... a separate show. Got it, got it, got it, got it. I I did not finish the Clone Wars, so I had to start it back up from the beginning. Because I don't remember where I left off. The beautiful thing about it is it really kind of doesn't matter. I guess, but I don't know. I'm a completionist. I gotta do all of it. Fair. So... <sighs> I guess this has become more of a nostalgia episode, but that's what memory's about. What's like, what's the things, cause like, I, I didn't get too much of this cause my mother had a terrible childhood. My father was from Korea. So, uh, but like, I don't know. They, they shared some things from, I guess maybe not their childhood, but their like adulthood with me. So I'm excited to be like, yo, small munchkin, this is, Phineas and Ferb, this is the good Ben 10. This is cool Star Wars. What's your, like, draft pick for, like, if... I don't know if you're planning on getting munchkins, but... I... Um, when they... When they come of age and of responsibility, I will show them both Gravity Falls and Avatar The Last Air Raid. Mm, those are hot, hot picks. Uh, Gravity Falls, fantastic. Avatar Last Airbender, so Gucci. Korra, mid. I did not watch it, because I was like, eh, I, I, I just, I don't care enough. It focused to a more mature audience, and it lost a lot of the charm of the original series. I know a lot of people liked it. I'm glad you liked it. And I did not. Um, Samurai Jack is a recent one that I've watched that's been on the brain. That one's, that one's good. Um, I think it's supposed to be TV. Oh, I think the, mo the, the fifth season, which was a reboot, is more mature than the other ones. But that, that one's really good. Um, but that may just be, may be because of recency, not because, it's not really... I mean, it's it's oh, it's older, so it should it, it has it has passed the test of time, but not the Ryan Alexander Lee test of time. We'll see how long it sits in the old noggin. 
But for the time being, well, it's a good one. It's a real good one. Mm. Honestly, there's so many, like, I'll, I'll just show my kids most of, like, Disney Channel, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network shows that I grew up with. They're gonna watch most of those. They're, they're gonna, they're gonna have to enjoy them. Yeah. Ugh. The kids will also, they will, they'll definitely be Lego kids. I will definitely mm. get them Legos. Also, just like, Mario Kart and all the Wii games, like, I absolutely loved, like, I, I don't know how I spent so much time, because, like, whenever I had a Wii, I only remember playing Mario Kart, Super Mario Galaxy, and New Super Mario Bros. That was all I played. Yeah. And I don't know how I sank so many hours into all of those. If I was just, like, really bad and it took me forever, I'm like, what? But, like, there's no feasible way I could have spent that much time on three yeah. games. I, I feel bad, because it's like... I know my kids need to need to go outside and I have to encourage that in them, but like I will for sure be playing video games with my children and beating them so they know who's the authority. Like I will be No, no, no. They I they have to get in the grind set early. So I'm trading them I'm trading them to be perfect gamers. Like kind of like in like the movies where it's like my father trained me to be the ultimate warrior. From a young age, I, I was taught in hand-to-hand combat. It's like, no, from a young age, he learned motor-eye coordination, hand-eye motor coordination, and uh, he could shell jump. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Little Timmy, seven years old, he could shell jump. What can your kid do? Read at a second grade reading level? Useless. We have phones for that. Do you, like, how how far back do your photos and, like, your camera go for your, on your phone? For my phone? Not very far. I'm not a huge camera guy, despite me, like, you need, that's funny, because, like, it's like, what? He owns the big camera. But I don't know, it's just, like, I don't know if it's me being dumb and pretentious. It's just, like, I don't like taking photos in the moment. I've got, I've grown up, I've kind of gotten into it now. Like, if it's a good photo, I'm like, okay, I'll take the good photo. But it's just like, I'm not going to, like, just burn my time taking photos because I'm not interested in, like, posting it on the internet and having people, like, shoot me the likes. If that's your cup of tea, go go for it. Uh, farm that clout, as I would say. But for me, it's like, I'd much rather just sit and live in the moment. I say that, but then, like, Three days later, I won't remember what I was doing, so I probably should be taking photos. So I'm like, oh, right. I did that. I want to say, like, the earliest photo was, like, the first photo I took with my, like, with my, like, the iPhone 7. Because my father would, like, get them from work and, and just, like, hand them down to the kids. It was, like, a photo of me in the yard um, from, like, 2015, making a smug face. And then, like, I'd use the sliders to turn up the contrast, sharpening, and brightness all the way up. So it's an awful looking photo. Now, if you want to talk about photo albums, you ought to look at the Nintendo 3DS photo album that's sitting on that thing's. Got some absolute art on it. Oh, it's got, it's got legs that you would not believe. That one's got some some good some good memories on it. I did uncover like some like core memory stuff of like because you could move data from your DSI to the 3DS, and so I was like I, it was like maybe like half a month ago. It's like scrolling through my old 3DS, and like there was the audio recordings 
and like you could you could like mess with the pitch shift and it like I auto tuned myself going pee pee poo poo uh -huh. <laughs> uh, you really haven't changed at all have you no no I haven't I was like oh my god I was so funny I was like man I truly understand bait and switch the rule of thirds I'm a master of comedy Stuff is hard. We did just do an episode called Memories. So. We're basically experts on it. We are. I invented remembering things. No, I'm, 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 my memories are very like. Or maybe not my memories, but it's just like I remember feeling things. And then like the things that actually happened. Less important. Like, I will remember a movie based how I felt on it, and then afterwards, what was the plot? I'm trying to think of this, like, any, any big, big emotions that, like, sat out. I knew, because we gotta be, this is a comedy podcast for being comedy. I do remember very distinctly smuggling diapers from when my brother Cause like he was a, he was like a tot, uh, no, that's a wrong, I was a toddler when he was an infant. And like my mom was trying to move me out of diaper and I was like, what? No, I can poop wherever I want. So I would like, I would sneak into his room and like, I had a pillowcase full of diapers in my closet. And like one day she found them. I was like, damn, dang it. She was like, Alex, are you taking diapers from Jonah? I was like, no, not off of them. You crazy? Now, what I don't remember is, did I change my own diaper? I, I don't know if I thought this through. I don't remember that far back. But that's a, that's a pretty, that one goes pretty far back. So I would have been like five. So I, I guess I remember that. What else? What other shenanigans? remember I learned to ride a bike because my very mind over the matter or maybe maybe I was conniving enough to just like not do something until my parents got mad enough to reward me for it I really was really bad at riding the bike and the bicycle the bicycle is like the one thing I'll do if I ever get outdoors because I, I get to go fast with minimal effort and I was like but my first like time getting on the bike I was like super wobbly and I sucked and like we spent like three days trying to get it done with no with like no success. My mom goes, you know, Alex, I'll give you ten dollars if you get on that bike and pedal down now. And apparently, like my mother just throws money at me, and I'm like, okay, all my problems are solved because I hopped on the bike and went. Meow. Good to know. Easy ten dollars. Uh, I remember my father had not watched Smokey the Bear on the on the television because this was after I was a Boy Scout so I knew this stuff I'd been I'd done the fire trainings my yeah. father in an attempt to get rid of leaves stuffed them in the garbage can and then like lit them on fire or he lit them on fire and then put it in the garbage can it didn't matter it was a dumb idea either way so for any of our viewers listening out there do not light leaves on fire. Arson uh, is fun. Like, <laughs> it's not a very smart idea because the embers will stay there and they will reignite 
and half of not half that's an exaggeration but they were like a fourth like one of the walls was just like fire all the way up um so arson is fun Ooh. arson is fun i remember getting a knock as we were all sitting on the tv and our neighbors were like you do know like a fourth of your house is on fire and we're like oh i mean like i wasn't worried i sat outside I think I hit under the blanket because I was trying to see my leapfrog, Gabe. Because it was hard to see. My mom ran into the fire. Like, she ran into the burning house to get pictures. She was like, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I was well, like, You gotta memorialize it. Yeah, yeah. I think it may have been for the insurance plan, but more for the Facebook page. Uh... And I remember, like, later, it was like, what, what happened? And like, like, I was like, how did the house catch on fire? And Dad was like, I was burning leaves and I left them in the trash can. I was like, you burn leaves and put them in a trash can? You dolt. That's like rule number seven and nothing's not to do. Like, I pulled out my Smokey the Bear. He's now in, he's now in the Creative Commons license, or Creative, I could mention his name now. It's like, come on, look at this. Rule number seven. Don't be dumb. Smokey the Bear is very disappointed on this day. He's not. He's it's not good. Smokey the Bear. What about me? Fat F for old Smokey. Do you ever do any like memory game things like meant to like make your brain all big? They always stressed me out a lot. <laughs> I I was never a big fan of those. There's also the ones where it would be like you had to like it would give you a task and you had to do it really quick. I remember specifically I had this like I spy game and you had to like it was the ice cream mini game, and it was like you had to put the toppings on the ice cream, and be like, there was like sprinkles and like. Is this also on the leapfrog? Because I I can picture the game you're talking about right now. I think I, it was. It may have been. It was either that or the DS. It, it had to have been. Like I mean, they may have made a copy for the DS, but like I rem I know what you are talking about right yeah. now. Yeah. And, dude, that minigame stressed me out so much. <laughs> it was too much for your poor little Ben brain. The I, uh, anxiety was through the roofs. They had a brain academy for the... It started on the DS, but they had it for the Wii. And, like, that game... It gets hard. Like, the things they make you remember. And they tried to resell it for, like, the, the Nintendo Switch. And I was like, oh, this is cute. And it was literally the exact same games they had in the Wii. I was like, no, I'm not buying this. So I invited a friend over once and was like, time to invite you over to my house to play the games I've played and make you look stupid. I creamed him. I was like, you are so dumb. It's like, it's like a... It, but they get hard. It's like... They'll like you have like a little flashlight and you have like a to shine it around to see how many of like random animals and then they'll like cut out the lights and say how many of X animal or which which one was more. It's like, I don't know, bro. The one that always got me was like it was the you had to like pop balloons from lowest to highest and it's easy when it's like you know like zero one two seven twenty five, but then they'll throw in negatives. Like, uh, Ooh, big number. Trippy. And then it gets, they do fractions. I'm like, Ugh. I took modern calculus to not have to use my brain. Man, that, that would just get very annoying, very quick. I don't know, it made me feel like I was pretty smart. They don't play video games to be smart, they play video games to ruin my brain. Fair enough. Turn into mush. Thank you. 
problem is, like, in the beginning, dude, we used to have such banger endings. And, like, I don't know what it is. I get, we get sleepy, and then these endings just kind of trail off. And it's like, you gotta find something cool to end it on. <laughs> so, rather than, like, ending with a killer banger ending, we could just workshop a few endings right now. How, how does that sound bad? I like that idea. So, like, we could have, I guess, an ending be, like, where we, we, like, hype the next one, I guess. It's like, ah, I love all these memories about slugs. Or we hit him with a, man, this was fun talking about memories in the past, but you know what's even better than memories in the past? The future. What's coming in your future? A new episode of the Midnight Oil coming, dropping on a streaming service near you. Yeah, yeah, nice try. Don't try second date. Um, I think, uh, 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 so here's, here's what we'll, we'll, we'll workshop a few banger endings. One thing that I, I forgot, and then we'll use one of them. So, like, I think it'll be like, wow, bazinga. What a, what a radical, radical time. Whoa. We could, comp- we could just completely shift tone. <laughs> All right, I like it. It's just a complete tonal shift. Just completely change. Like pivot on down, like, wow. Sick, sick radical ending, my guy. Uh, 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 you guys are totes lame for watching the Bimnite oil. So remember when I said, like, let's farm clout, and then I said, I actually don't care about how many viewers we get, and then I'm about to contradict that? Yeah. Because, like, I don't care if, like, everybody hates the podcast. Uh, because the, the podcast is not for you suckers. It's for me. It's True. It's an excuse to, to hang out with Ben, because Ben's, you know, he's a busy man. You know, you gotta, we don't talk outside of the podcast, and... I, I actually don't exist outside of the podcast. He's a figment of my imagination. He's just a mere mem- memory. <laughs> Gotta call back to the episode. But, um, I think we've hit our stride. Like, we've got, done a good couple of episodes. And we've got, like, a couple of other, like, guests that we want, I'd like to have on that are, like, like close and dear to my heart. But then there's, like... You know, they, they, we, there comes a point where it's like, we've got to start, like, using our celebrity status to leverage other people into yeah. doing what we want. So, like, I've been thinking, Ben, we should start emailing and, like, just, like hitting up random people be like, yo, you want to be on the podcast that are way out of our social strata? How way, how way out we talk? I think if we go too far out, we'll be like deemed as annoying. And so, like, I think the thing is, like, we could. There's ne- We we've always got to try. Yeah. Because worst comes to worst, they say no. But I'm thinking, like, we literally just like anybody we think is cool. We just invite them. Like, for example, yeah. Phineas and Ferb, we just start hitting up, like, random people. It's like, yo, Phineas, you want to be on the pod? We'll talk about orange shirts. Hmm? Ah! That would be awesome. I'm not going to cool. first thing when you said inviting, like, famous guests. I, I, I just thought, like, The Rock. That would but. be funny. That, hey, even for us, that may be, may be a bit unta- unattainable, but... It's something day. to work towards. Everyone thinking, needs a goal. Like, we just, like, start pulling names out of a hat. Out of, like, all of the names in the possible world. Like, we just start, like, random hockey players. You're not doing anything. Yeah. It's probably not hockey season. 
Today's episode, The Desert. <laughs> we just look at him. Like, get pranked. Go home. And we hang up. And that's the episode. I, I think we need to, like, start leveraging this power we hold over the community to, to do nefarious acts and, and just start, like, farming, farming cloud. But, like, I, I built this podcast such that, such that we could, uh, use it to meet people we think are cool. This was our evil plan all along. So, so, when, when have we made it? Like, who's... After we get X person on the podcast, when can we retire? Like, when can we stop making episodes? Because I know mm. my person. Oh, that's tough. I... I want to say... Probably, like... Either... Ryan Reynolds or The Weeknd for me personally. Mm. Obama. See, I was thinking that, but I was like, been there, done that. Obama's, he's, he came, he saw, he conquered. He's done the whole podcast. He's thing. done the podcast thing, but it's the thing. It's like, I would not stop laughing if I had Obama on the podcast. Like, uh, yeah. No, this is great. Uh, I did one of these with, uh, with Bruce, and, uh, we talked about, uh, racial injustice, and, uh, now, you want to know what's my favorite, uh, popsicle flavor? Uh, it's obviously orange creamsicle. Be like, yeah, Mr. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Obama. I would probably only respond to him in an Obama impression, so he would <laughs> oh, probably, he... he would hang up. <laughs> We would probably get like a drone strike called on us. We would. We would get the Secret Service like tapping in the line. As if we as if I wasn't already on some kind of watch. It would have to be Obama. Or like I don't know, like these celebrities don't interest me other than like the possibility of just like being a mild nuisance. Uh uh, B B Barack Obama or Patrick Warburton. I think they both have funny voices. That would be fun. I don't know if he, if Patrick could handle podcasting at this level. Yeah. But I don't know if he's ready for that. Yeah. But he might be in time. Because like we're so charismatic right now, and we might just overwhelm old Patrick. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, so like this is the the but not all. We're the uh, uh, I love the but not all. Oh yeah, Papa. Yo. Yeah. The midnight oil. Midnight. Midnight. Be be sure be be sure to check the dustgriber. To, to see the cool photo, uh, the beautiful art, and also the PowerPoint <laughs> presentation. Uh, yeah. Memory. Memories bring back, memories bring back. As you mind me, I would you but eat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh.